On this edition of Fulton Law and Justice, Fulton's solicitor sits down with Miss Bunny Jackson Ransom for a conversation about justice reform. We'll also hear how residents are getting a second chance after a slip up with the law. And later, we'll take a look at notary fraud and how the people's clerk is trying to address this issue. I'm Douglas Bell and Fulton Law and Justice starts right after the break. Stay with us. Welcome to Fulton Law and Justice. I'm your host, Douglas Bell. A number of Fulton County residents get their criminal records cleared after taking advantage of a program partnership with the Fulton County Solicitor General. Here's more on that and more on the solicitor's conversation with a longtime social justice advocate in this edition of Restorative Justice. Welcome back to Restorative Justice. I'm Chief Deputy Solicitor Kenya Johnson. As you may know, the Solicitor General's Office prosecutes misdemeanor and traffic offenses like impaired driving and domestic violence. Our mission is to prosecute criminal offenses with smart, fair, and restorative justice. Well, a longtime Atlanta civil servant shares that spirit of restorative justice. I'm talking about Bunny Jackson Ransom, former wife of Atlanta Mayor Maynard Jackson and contributor of the documentary titled Maynard. She sits down with our Fulton solicitor, Keith Gamage. Thanks, Kenya, and thanks to you, Miss Jackson Ransom, for joining us. Well, let me thank Kenya and Lane for being so accommodating, and thank you. Well, we're happy to have you here. You have a long history of being civically engaged, specifically here in Atlanta. Please tell us about your civic engagement related to women that were formerly incarcerated. Oh yes, okay, I'm a Delta, and a long time ago when I first came to Atlanta, I think I was 25 years old, I vaguely remember that phase of my life. <laughs> but what happened was we had a program called One America, where we met women who were coming out of a prison experience. We met them really at the bus or at a train, and we we embraced them. We helped them find their children if they had lost their children. Mm -hmm. We helped them go back to school if they wanted to go back to school. We just helped them rebuild their life. It was a very rewarding uh, period of my life and a very good time for me because uh, uh, I was just coming to Atlanta and didn't know which end was up and mm -hmm. I found it. Well that is fantastic service and you also produced and wrote this fantastic movie Maynard. I'm going to fix that. Okay. I didn't produce it. I didn't write it. Maynard the uh Third -huh. and Wendy produced it, along with Sam Pollard, who was an excellent director, won a lot of awards, Emmys, and nominated for Academy Awards. They wrote and produced. I was the loving mother okay. who supported them in 2015 when Maynard said, you know, I want to make this movie about my daddy. And he did, and he said, Mama, can you help? Well, Mama helped. Wow. We had a company, I have a company called First Class, you know that, it's a mm -hmm. PR company, and we do a lot of stuff. So uh, one of the things we did was we staffed the movie. You know, you gotta have somebody to lick the stamps and stuff the envelopes and write the letters and raise the money and, and, and do it all over again when it doesn't work. So that was the part that I added to the movie. It's a great movie. Please tell us about it. Well, it's about the life and legacy of Maynard. Um, it's about a period when he made Atlanta what it is, and he made Atlanta the cosmopolitan city that it is. He, 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 he turned the city around. Well, let me tell you this. Remember the part in the movie where they say, he said, grass will grow? That's right. That was the period when he was getting pushback for affirmative action, but he literally said, I will shut this airport down if we don't have some black people doing some jobs. You know, I'm, being, I'm breaking it really down to you know, the language that we all understand. Um, he, he had a dedication to his people. His job was to make life better for his people. That's what he did. So I grew up in Atlanta. Yes. And people of my generation looked to Maynard Jackson as really a giant, as a beacon of hope and inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
He was such a powerful figure in the city, even for little kids growing up, and always was a man of the people. But what was it like to actually be married to him at the time that he became the first African-American mayor? Do you really mayor? want me to answer that question? Please. <laughs> it, was, it was a challenge. Mm. It was, do we really want to do this, Maynard? But Maynard was born to lead. You know, he had it in his DNA. Mm. And when he was a big man, he had a powerful voice. When he walked into the room and he spoke, you had to listen. It was his voice that I think attracted to me in the first place. When we were back in, he was in law school and I was in grad school. Mm. But uh, he just would not take no for an answer. If he thought he was right, and he always did, he would not take <laughs> no for an answer. He, he pushed ahead. He, he did what he came to do. He came to serve, to lead. I don't think there's ever been a leader that matched him, mm. present company, <laughs> accepted. Thank you. Um, that didn't do a, a good job. He did a great job. He was a great mayor. Atlanta would not be the Atlanta that we know it as today without the leadership of both Absolutely. you and Mayor Maynard Jackson. Absolutely. Well, I don't know about me, but I know about Maynard. What is Absolutely. his legacy? His legacy is he left the city better than he found it. His legacy is you're sitting in this job. Absolutely. That's part of his legacy. His legacy is Ingrid Sanders Jones has a job, has a job at Coca-Cola at the top of the level. That was his legacy. It still is. His legacy is still in place. The movie helps us remember that. The movie helps us know that the man still lived and breathed like a man. You know, he wasn't Jesus, as I said in the movie. The water didn't part when he walked into the room, but black people thought it would. So his challenge was to please his constituency, to do the right thing while pleasing his constituency, to accept the fact that the buck stopped with him, to accept the fact that mistakes will be made, and not to excuse them away, but to face reality and get his job done. He did that. His legacy he was and is, he was an honest man for the people. What, what would he say? What would Mayor Maynard Jackson say to elected officials today? Do what's right. Mm. You know what's right. Your grandmother told you. Mm. There's a little voice that goes off that says, if you do that, you get in trouble. But then he set up a mechanism in this city for us, people like you, people like the mayor, to use to make sure you are right. The neighborhood planning units, in my opinion, one of the best things that Maynard did. He set up a system where we could go to the community to tell them what we are about to do, to get their opinion on whether or not they think what we are about to do is right, and to just listen. Would you share a bit more about what the neighborhood planning units are? The neighborhood planning units. Well, there's a history there, but I'm not going to go into that long history. I'm just going to tell you what they are about, in my opinion. Okay. They are a mechanism set up for citizens of this city to go into every community and ask the people what they want. So we have that choice. If we are going to build a baseball field, if we are going to pass a law, before we do that, we can go to the neighborhood planning union and ask, do you think this is a good law? Do you like it? If they say no, then most likely they don't like it. You're going to get some feedback. If they like it, then you've got their permission to move ahead. I think I talked about that earlier before I walked in the door. But Maynard did a lot of things like that. You know, he would stop at the corner, on the corner of in West End, what's the name of that corner, John Wesley, not John Wesley Dobbs, Lowry. There was a Krispy Kreme donut place there. He stopped at that donut place, <laughs> buy donuts for people, and talk to them at the bus stop and share a donut with them. That's what he did. When he went to a banquet, before he left the banquet, he had gone into the kitchen and talked to all of the, the people who cooked the food and served the food. He never stopped listening to the people. Mm. Truly a special leader. The movie captures so many moments that are so very inspirational. Do you have a favorite scene in the movie? <laughs> wow, do I have a favorite scene in the movie? I think it's the scene that I just mentioned where one of his uh, lieutenants, I don't know which one it was, maybe it was George Berry, 
who said, Maynard said, grass will grow. Mm -hmm. He was so vehemently caught up in that, in that movement. I want black people to get a piece of this pie. And if they don't get it, I will shut it down. I think that statement says so much. Very powerful. Thank you so very much for joining us today with this information, with this really heartfelt information related to Maynard Jackson and to you. Thank well, you thank so very you. much. Thank you so much for asking me and ask me again I will. so I can talk about restorative justice. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Back to you, Kenya. Thank you, Solicitor Gamage and Mrs. Jackson Ransom. Great conversation. We've also got good news to share about how the Solicitor General's office has helped to change the lives of people who were once on the wrong side of the law. The Restorative Justice Expungement Summit for Jobs and Education helped residents have their criminal record restricted if they meet certain requirements. Here's Felicia Church. You already registered to the right, to the right. As soon as the doors opened at this union's building on Metropolitan Parkway, residents lined up for a second chance at life. People like Adam Bauer Keller, who finally walked free and clear of all charges on this day. Everybody pushed this through and got something that was in my background that's been haunting me for a long time, just completely expunged, and I'm very, very happy about that. The Office of the Fulton County Solicitor General created a misdemeanor expungement division in early 2017 to offer year-round access to apply for criminal record restrictions. The office partners with county agencies and community partners to provide that same service during what they call their Restorative Justice Record Restriction Summit. Our Restorative Justice Freedom Summits is aimed at making sure that those folks whose records from criminal past, particularly misdemeanor, nonviolent offenses, can be erased so that they can get gainful employment, so that they can fulfill the true meaning of being an American citizen. I've heard stories before from previous ones. I've heard some very moving and touching stories today where good people who may have made a mistake, one man in particular comes to mind, made a 20-year-old stupid mistake. He's 25 now, college graduate, but until today he had that black mark on his record. Now that's gone. Those eligible for expungement of their criminal record are individuals arrested but not convicted of a misdemeanor from any Fulton County law enforcement agency. We're thrilled to be working with the Fulton County Solicitor's Office. We've had a great partnership for the last couple of years, ensuring that Fulton County residents that have a misdemeanor on their record and are eligible can get it off. The process to expunge a charge usually takes in excess of 150 days. Now the process is expedited through this one-day event where eligible citizens walk away with a clean record. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Felicia Church. Thanks, Felicia, and another thanks to Mrs. Bunny Jackson Ransom. For more information on upcoming screenings of Maynard the Movie, you can reach our office at the Fulton County Solicitor General at 404-612-4800. We also invite you to join us on our website and social media. Be sure to sign up to receive the Gamage Report, our quarterly newsletter. For restorative justice, I'm Kenya Johnson. Until next time, please be safe. Thanks so much. When we come back, a warning for those who have a need for a notary. The People's Clerk is next. Welcome back. As you may know, a notary public is a public servant appointed by the government to witness the signing of important documents. But what happens when fraud has been committed when using a notary? That is the subject of this edition of The People's Clerk. Hi everyone, I'm Nicholas Cott from the office of the Fulton County Clerk of the Superior and Magistrate Courts. If you are a resident that has purchased or sold property taken an oath of office, needed to obtain a certified document, or any other similar task, chances are you've needed the services of a notary. 
With nearly 180,000 notaries in the state of Georgia and almost 16,000 in Fulton County alone, finding a notary public to fulfill a service for you has become extremely easy. A bit too easy, some might say. And with the ease of access to notaries, coupled with the seemingly lax guidelines needed to become a notary, notary fraud has become a growing concern for those in need and for those providing the services of notaries. Our guest today will talk about this. Joining us from the Clerk's Authority is Mike Smith. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for having me. Well, before we dive into this hot and, and much needed topic of concern, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, about the Clerk's Authority, and mm -hmm. the Clerk's Authority's role in governing uh, our process when it comes to notaries. Sure. I've, I've been with the Clerk's Authority for about, about 20 years in various roles. Um, the Clerk's Authority uh, was originated uh, back in the 1990s uh, to assist clerks of Superior Court with various statewide projects, one of which is the uh, record keeping and maintenance and, and, and education of notaries. Mm -hmm. before, we, before we go any further, can you talk about the process of becoming a notary really quick and you'll see why I asked that in a second. Right, right, right. So the process is uh, very simple. Um, as you know, there are a minimum number of requirements of an individual who wishes to become a notary, uh, be 18 years old and, and a few other things, be a resident of the county in which you're commissioned. And then you are commissioned as a notary in the county in which you reside. So I'm a Fulton County notary. I've been to your office to be commissioned uh, by your staff. And, and, and so each individual that is a, a resident of, of all, or, or the particular county of all 159 uh, counties in Georgia, that's where that person's commissioned. Okay, so you, you said it yourself, and, and I'm going to kind of echo that, a quite simple process to become a notary. Um, mm -hmm. Notary fraud mm -hmm. is at an all-time high especially it seems like for me in our office. Do you feel that the ease of the application process is, is, is one reason why there has been an uptick or, or some other, other reason that you might? Uh, that could be one thing. Um, certainly when you talk about application process, which then would be part of that are the requirements placed upon the applicant to know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, also believe that you know, uh, the economy has something to do with it. Uh, the economy right now is booming, therefore there are more businesses, there's more transactions going on, which means that uh, people that work in these businesses are being asked to become notaries. Um, and, and so there's just more people that are notaries, which, which would uh, naturally, you think, increase the uh, occurrences uh, of fraud. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. Well, from a clerk standpoint, what do you think can be done on the application end to you know, help prevent notary fraud, or you know, I really believe it begins with education. Um, you know, we we're talking a little bit earlier about about this, and so um, I really believe that most people that become notaries want to do the right thing, mm -hmm. but they because but because the state of Georgia has not uh, to this point required a notary applicant to go through formal training and or examination. Um, there are a lot of people out there practicing uh, or, or, or uh, in, in, in involved in notary acts, and they really don't know what they're doing. And I base that a lot on, as you have, uh, a lot of the comments, the emails, the phone calls that we get from people. And thankfully, they are asking the question, but for every person that does ask, what am I supposed to do, there are many more that don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that is a problem. Mm -hmm. what, what should citizens be on the lookout for? Um, if I am a signer mm -hmm. going to a notary, the first thing, especially if, if I am unknown to that notary, if the notary does not ask me for ID, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because at the core of what a notary does is prove or uh, be satisfied that the signer or signers are who they say they are. Mm -hmm. And you determine that either through certainly personal knowledge mm -hmm. More times than not, it's through proof of ID. Typically, common things, driver's licenses, passports, military IDs, and, and, and things like that that has a photograph. And the law actually uses the term satisfactory evidence, meaning that the ID mm -hmm. presented to the, to the notary must be satisfactory 
to the notary. Otherwise, the notary certainly could ask for some other type of ID. Mm -hmm. Well, there are three different types of notary complaints that hit my desk. Um, citizens complaining against a notary, issuing mm -hmm. the complaint against a notary. Mm -hmm. Notaries policing other notaries, mm -hmm. but you also have some notaries who issue complaints against citizens stating that their, you know, their stamps or seals have been stolen. Mm -hmm. What can actual notaries do mm -hmm. to help prevent becoming victims of notary fraud? I, I think what, n notaries are still citizens, so I, I really like, you pointed that out, I really like the fact of notaries policing other notaries, mm -hmm. because a lot of the times that's what we hear. Um, you're in an office environment, whether it be in a cubicle or, or a, a, you know, you're at your company, and there are, there's more than one person that's a notary. Certainly, if you see a coworker uh, violating uh, some part of the law or not following procedure, um, encourage those folks to, you know, maybe coach them if, if, if in fact, uh, uh, that person's new. Mm -hmm. um, as we talked about before, our state, uh, and, and, and let me back up, so Georgia is not unusual in the fact that we don't require formal education for notaries, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but uh, knowing that that through, for instance, your office, uh, you do provide information when someone becomes or applies to be a notary. We have tons of information on our website, a, as you do, and and then we do you know training classes around the state as well. Okay. But, okay. So can you speak a little bit more about those training classes? Typically, the training classes, what we'll do is, well, I say, wait, it's usually me, mm -hmm. and uh, in conjunction with a clerk, I'll schedule a day. So we'll usually uh, do a couple of classes, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Typically, they're about 90 minutes long. Um, we hit the highlights. I like to do Q&A uh, because a lot of times the questions from the attendees is some of the best parts of the training because, you know, a lot of us have gone through um, online type training classes, mm -hmm. webinars, whatever, and those are great. Mm -hmm. There's there's no replacement, though, I believe, for being in a room with people and you can see their expressions and their faces, and they'll ask questions they may not normally ask. Uh, excuse me, ask like during some type of audiovisual training. Okay. Yeah. Um, best practices for a notary, really mm -hmm. quick. Best practices um, always require ID. Mm -hmm. And it sounds silly, but you got to witness the person or people sign the document. I, I promise you it happens every day where they don't, where someone either doesn't know or it's a friend. Mm -hmm. You can be a friend outside of, of that notarial act. Don't be a friend and violate the law and don't, uh, and don't witness the document. Another thing that's recommended, it's not in the law, is to maintain a notary log or a notary journal. It's simply a way to, to capture those important elements of that notarial act, the signer's information, the date and time the notarial act occurred, All, and, and maybe the most important element of that is the signer is also going to sign the, the notary's notary journal, mm -hmm. in okay. addition to obviously signing the document. Okay, right. okay. Right. So there, there are no fees associated with training for? No, no, we charge no fees. Mm -hmm. We provide it as a service. Um, we look at it as, as the, does your office, as, as a public service, um, and it really protects not only the notary, it protects the public as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, an educated notary is someone who's not going to typically violate the law, uh, certainly not unknowingly. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I, I know, I wish we had more time to talk about this. There's so much more that we could talk about, um, but I think citizens who are interested can really check out one of the trainings that, that we partner with the clerk's authority. With. A, a, absolutely. We, uh, when we schedule these um, around the state, we do publicize those. And uh, certainly, even if, <clears throat> we don't even require that, for instance, if we do a class here in Fulton County, that that person be a Fulton County resident. We, have, we know because of the size of, of Fulton County, a lot of folks that might live in neighboring counties work here. Maybe they can make it to one of the classes during the day. Okay, okay. Any, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Um, the, the main thing is for, for notaries is to, to be educated and for people, you know, the average person that's not a notary, rarely do they need notarial services. So they're not aware of what a notary may or may not be able to do. So hopefully through this, we educate the public a little better and the primary function of a notary is to prevent fraud. Mm -hmm. And if a notary does those simple things, requiring ID, being satisfied that the signer is who they say they are, then fraud will be prevented. Thank you for joining us, as Thank always. You. Thank you, Nick. All right. 
We'd like to thank Mr. Mike Smith and the Georgia Clerk's Authority for its continued partnership in assisting our office in carrying out its mandates for processing an equal care concern regarding Georgia notaries and the people they serve. Each year, the Clerk's Office commissioned several hundred Fulton County residents to become Georgia notaries. And with the need of notary services growing each year, those numbers are expected to greatly increase. In addition to updating policies regarding the notary application and the vetting process, our office encourages citizens who currently serve as notaries and those interested in becoming notaries to partake in various training opportunities offered by our office and the clerk's authority. These online and on-site trainings provide in-depth information on procedures and laws that continue to be extremely valuable to even the most seasoned notaries. And it's been proven that a good notary is a knowledgeable one. If you are interested in learning about becoming a notary or if you feel that you or a loved one has become a victim of notary fraud, we're located at 136 Prior Street, Southwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30303. Or visit one of our annex locations for your convenience. You can also visit us on our website, FultonClerk.org. We take pride in assisting every Fulton County resident in every way that we can because we believe in doing the right thing the right way each time for every customer. On behalf of the Honorable Kathleen Tina Robinson, your Fulton County Clerk of Superior and Magistrate Courts, I'm Nicholas Cotton. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Nicholas. We'll be right back. Fulton County has committed itself to serving its residents in six priority areas. The strategic goal for Fulton's justice partners is making sure that all people are safe. On Fulton Law and Justice, we show you how Fulton's law enforcement and justice partners are doing that every day in how they serve and in the programs they provide to enhance the lives of all people, young and old. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Fulton Law and Justice. I'm Douglas Bell. We'll see you next time.